Dear students, if you can recall your memory, we have been discussing chapter number 6, Project, Activity and Risk Planning. So far, we have discussed about the Project Activity part of this chapter and one more topic in Project Activity part which is Responsibility Matrix. It's remaining, then we will move on to discuss Risk Planning part of this chapter. Responsibility Matrix RACI in brackets you can see that that is basically an acronym which stands for R for responsible, A for accountable, C for consult, I for inform. So when we are performing uh, project activities that responsibility matrix shows that who is responsible for performing these activities, who is accountable, who should be consulted or provided support or who should be informed or notified. That responsibility matrix is also known as linear responsibility short and assignment matrix a responsibility assignment matrix. What it does basically it shows critical interfaces between the project activities and the human resources which are required to perform these activities. That responsibility matrix keeps track of who must approve what and who must be notified further through that matrix example you will uh, get clear idea about that responsibility matrix this is sample RACI matrix here you can see in that first column work breakdown structure WBS here you can see that we have taken an example of undertaking a project so that project activities are subdivided into three work breakdown structure activities determining need solicit quotation write appropriate second column is for task so these activities are further divided into tasks such as first activity of determining need is divided into two tasks for example task a1 and task a2 so these two columns are for work breakdown structure or project activity then the remaining columns are the responsibility means whose responsibility is to perform these uh, project activities here uh, project office and field operation are responsible for performing these project activities here in these column different legions or symbols are given these legions or symbols represent here uh, these uh, black triangle shows who is responsible for performing project activities and uh, that black circle shows that who should be consulted or who should provide support for performing these project activities and who should be notified or informed is represented by black square and who should be accountable or give approval for that project activity is represented by that white circle for suppose first activity of determining need for task a1 uh, project manager's role is to give approval so person who gives approval is also accountable for that project activity and project engineer's role is to uh, provide support and that is the uh, person who should be consulted when some resources are required An industrial engineer role here is uh, represented by black triangle is he is responsible for performing that activity and field operation manager does not have any role so in that way uh, we came to know who is responsible for doing which activity of a project so that's all about sample RACI matrix further now we are discussing risk part of uh, this chapter so all projects are risky uncertainty is high risk is basically chances of occurrence of an unfavorable event so project manager must manage this risk risk varies widely between projects depending upon the type of the project either it's a simple project or it's a complex projects that project risk varies risk also varies widely between type of organization either it's a services organization or it's a merchandising organization or it's a manufacturing organization uh, risk is usually built on the results of prior projects so based on the knowledge experience of the project managers uh, uh, from the prior projects they can uh, uh, 
uh, further plan for the risk factors associated with the projects. So this is all about general discussion about the risk. Uh, these are the different parts to risk management when uh, project managers are managing risk. These parts of risk management should be considered. First one is risk management planning, then risk identification, qualitative risk analysis, quantitative risk analysis, risk response planning, risk monitoring and control risk management register. Uh, first part is risk management planning. Uh, project managers need to know the risk involved before selecting a project. Risk management plan must be carried out before the project can be formally selected. So even before the start of the project, you have to do risk management planning. And when we are doing risk management planning, more focus is on the external, the external risk factor. They can have severe impact on continuing that project, just like uh, political interferences, government rules, regulations, they can severely affect project activity. Suppose, for example, uh, you are uh, having a project of constructing an overhead bridge over a railway track. So before starting that project, you have to seek permission from the railway authorities. So project risk takes shape during planning. When you are doing project risk planning, you came to know about the different project risk factors and uh, keeping in mind these risk factors, you start project management planning. This project management planning is often handled by project office. It's all about risk management planning. <laughs> Risk identification. So here we are going to identify the different risk factors which are associated with a project. How can we do that? We can uh, uh, apply different methods just like checklist method or attribute listing. We can prepare a list in which we, uh, 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 we can write down all the risk factors associated with the project. We can also uh, conduct cause effect diagram we find out the different causes different factors which can have effect on project activities we can also uh, use flow charts or we can also do SWOT analysis SWOT is again an acronym which stands for strength weaknesses opportunities or threats which are associated with a project so this is all about risk identification Qualitative risk analysis, it is clear from the name, qualitative risk analysis does not involve number. Here we look at the probability of occurrence of a risk factor and its impact on project activities. Through that qualitative risk analysis, we can prioritize the risk factors which are associated with the project. Here we look at the sense of impact that risk factor have, can have on project activities. Uh, so each objective should be scaled and weighted. We can construct a risk matrix for qualitative risk approach and that can also be done for the opportunities. Uh, opportunities. Uh, risk matrix, here you can see that we have identified some risk factors associated with a project the, like tight schedule, client changes scope, can't acquire technical knowledge, recession, cost escalation, these are the risk factor can be associated with a project. Here we look at on vertical axis, we look at the probability means chances of occurrence of that risk factor starting from low to medium to high and the impact on the risk, these risk factors can have on project these activities. So here we have divided these risk factors into three squares. Uh, with dark green squares factors are considered as critical threats light green square factors are considered as the that these threats should be monitored and white squares can be considered these threats are means can be ignored because these factors have little impact on project activities such as for example uh, first risk factor tight schedule so chances of occurrence of that risk factor is you can see higher and it, its impact on medium on projects so these fact that factor is considered as a critical threat uh, for that project similarly an example of uh, 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 monitoring threat factor you can see here cost escalation can be considered as a uh, this is the factor risk factor should, which should be continuously monitored because 
its uh, you know chances of occurrence are although low but if cost escalates then it has it can have a high impact on project activities and again uh, one example of ignore threats is recession so according to that analysis we think that the chances of occurrence of recessions are very low and it can have a medium impact so that threat can be ignored this is how we can do qualitative risk analysis <clears throat> quantitative risk analysis we can do through finding out a risk priority number risk priority number is equal to as into l into d as stands for cvrt of uh, the risk factor likelihood of that risk factor and d stands for inability to detect that risk factors so higher that rpn number uh, then uh, that factor can be considered as a more risky for that project so steps to quantitative risk analysis are list way a project can fail evaluate the cvrt of that risk factor likelihood of that risk factor and inability to detect means either organization is able to detect if they are unable then that can be considered more risky factor for that organizations so higher the rpn number higher chances of risk for that uh, factor for that project so what project managers should should do they should consider ways to reduce that CVRT likelihood and inability to detect for each cause of the failure. Here again, we have uh, shown different risk factors as a threat that we discussed and qualitative risk analysis as well. Tight schedule can't acquire technical knowledge. Client changes the scope, cost escalation, and recession. Here you can see that. The RPN number of the factor can't acquire technical knowledge is highest. Yet. So this factor is considered as uh, most risky in comparison to all other critical threat factors. Uh, then second is client changes the scope. Why we said that this uh, factor is more risky because you can see overall score of that factor is higher as compared to all other factors. So suppose factor second can't acquire technical knowledge, its CVRT score is 8.5, its likelihood is 5 and inability to detect is 4. So overall score becomes 170. When we multiply all these three factors, 8.5 multiply 5 multiply 4 becomes 170. In that way we can do quantitative risk analysis for other factors as well. Risk response planning. So what if the risk factors that we have identified is likely to happen. So what organizations can do for these threats or risk factors? Uh, if uh, organization thinks that their effect is uh, uh, negligible, they can avoid these risk factors or either they can transfer these risk factors or they can try to mitigate or reduce effect of these factors or they can affect, they can accept that a risk factor and they can develop a strategies plans to overcome that risk factor same uh, planning can be done for the opportunities if that factor is an opportunity that can be exploited that can be shared within all other projects it can be more enhanced it can be accepted by the organization this is all about risk response planning risk monitoring and control here, when project activities are started, these are to be continuously monitored by the project management. And if there is issue, then a control mechanism is developed, certain way out strategies, plans are developed to overcome that uh, risk factor associated with it. So finally, uh, is risk management registered our risk management uh, staff is uh, supposed to keep a risk management register it's a, like a database in which they keep record of all past risk management we have discussed so far environmental threats that can have impact on the project assumptions which are made uh, when we are performing these project activities risk factors identified 
लिस्ट ऑफ कैटेगरीज एंड की वर्ड्स इस्टीमेशन विच आर मेड ऑन रिस्क स्टेट्स ऑफ प्रोजेक्ट इन्वायरमेंट और ऑन प्रोजेक्ट एजम्पन मिनट्स ऑफ द मीटिंग्स विच आर रिलेटेड टू द प्रोजेक्ट रिस्क फैक्टर्स एक्चुअल आउटकम्स ऑफ दिस प्रोजेक्ट एक्टिविटीज ऑल आर टू बी रिकॉर्डेड इन रिस्क मैनेजमेंट रजिस्टर so that they can be readily available when we need information we can take out from that risk management register that's all about this risk part of the chapter and uh, inshallah we will discuss chapter 7 budgeting estimating cost is and risk see you then goodbye